To install Milestone PS Tools, open up PowerShell as administrator and type install module Milestone PS Tools. Now you'll probably get a warning about an untrusted repository. Uh, the default repository is PS Gallery, but it's not trusted automatically. Uh, go ahead and hit Y for yes. the modules installed. Get module will show you what modules are loaded in the current PowerShell session and we can see uh, Milestone PS Tools is not there yet so we'll do import module Milestone PS Tools and then get module again and there it is and it's version 1.0.11 which is the current version. Before you start working with the configuration of your milestone system, you'll want to connect to the management server. And there's a few different ways to do that. Uh, first, connect management server, and we'll provide the server address. And in this case, my management server name is xProtect. And if I don't supply a username and password, then it's going to log in as the current Windows user. And now I'm connected. If I want to get information about the management server, I could do get management server. And then we have some information. So we have our management server name, Xprotect cluster, the version 13.1.0.1. And uh, we also have access to all of the configuration API objects. So if we want, we could look at the list of hardware or the list of recording servers by going management server equals, get management server, management server dot recording server folder dot recording servers. And we just have one recording server on this system. So let's show a quick list of commands built into the Milestone PS Tools module. Git command module Milestone PS Tools. So there's a lot of commands and a lot you can do with the module, uh, but let's just get started with a couple basics. Here we can get a list of recording servers. And if we only want their names, we can use the tools built into PowerShell to filter out the information we want. So select name, or we could do select name and ID. And if we want to filter our list of recording servers by name, we could do that. Um, we only have the one recording server, but I'll demonstrate how to do that. So get recording server dash name rec star. Now that didn't return anything because we need to put a star in front if we want to have wildcards on both ends of that string. And there's our recording server. We can get all hardware from all recording servers by just typing get hardware. And I'll just grab the hardware names and IDs. Um, if we want to only get hardware from a specific recording server, which on a large production system, the performance of uh, scanning all recording servers to retrieve all hardware might be a bit slow. Um, so you can, uh, you can filter that down to a specific recording server by doing this. Get recording server. And then pipe that into get hardware. So we're sending the recording server object into the get hardware command. So the get hardware command will only look for hardware from that recording server. And we'll grab the names and IDs. To retrieve camera or microphone, IO, metadata objects, we need to retrieve those from the hardware. So we need to provide the uh, get camera command with a hardware device to retrieve the cameras from. Uh, so in this case, we could do um, hardware equals 
get hardware. So now we have a variable hardware that has all of the hardware on the system. And I could pipe that into get camera and then I'll just select the camera name. Um, likewise, we can do get microphone. get input. When we get cameras or microphones from a hardware device, if we want to be specific about which channel that we want to grab, we can provide a, uh, a channel number in the request and the indexes start at zero. So as an example, let's do hardware. I'll just do the first one get camera channel zero, select name. Okay, so that's just the first camera channel. Uh, if I try to grab the second camera channel, in this case, it only has one channel, so it's giving me an error. Now, if I want to get the settings for a camera, then I can pass this camera channel to uh, get camera setting. And let's just get the general settings first. We need to select the first channel, which is channel zero. Okay, so we have brightness, saturation, contrast, and so on. Uh, if we wanna get the settings for the streams, we'll get stream settings. And if we don't provide any other settings uh, or any other parameters, then it's gonna give us the settings for every stream. But if we just want stream one, then we can grab stream number zero. And there's our stream, our stream settings. Now we can also change settings here. So let's do a set camera setting. And we're gonna set a stream setting on stream number zero, we're gonna set the, let's set the FPS to 15. Okay. And we'll go and retrieve those settings again. And I will only retrieve the FPS setting in this case. And now it's 15. Let's change it back to eight. And it's now eight. All right, so let's try something a little more advanced. Uh, let's go ahead and create a role, add a user to it, and give that user permissions, or excuse me, give that role permissions to uh, a hardware device. So we'll do add role, and we'll just call the role demo. And I'm gonna assign that role to a variable. Okay, there's our new role. Let's add a user to it. So I'll send that role through the pipeline. So role, pipe, and then add user. And I'm gonna do account name instead of SID. Um, and we'll do condon slash JH. I'm running a domain called condon.local in my lab. So add user, account name, condon JH, done. Uh, so let's do role get user. Now we can see Josh has been added to our role. We can see the SID and all the information that's stored in, in Milestone. Okay, so now we have a role with a user in it. Let's go ahead and give that role permissions to a device. So we still have our hardware variable here. So I'll keep playing with hardware uh, at index zero. So hardware zero, get device ACL, access control list. And we need to specify the role that we want the ACL for. So in this case, it is the demo role. OK, 
Okay, so here is our access control list for the hardware. Now, I provided, I sent the hardware object into the get device ACL. And so behind the scenes, uh, the get device ACL command has gone through uh, each of the folders for cameras, metadata, input, output, and so on. Um, and it's grabbed all of the devices, uh, all of the child devices for that hardware and provided me the, uh, the ACLs for those. So you can see um, at a glance that uh, everything's set to false. So uh, I don't have any permissions to any devices under that hardware at the moment. Uh, so let's change that. Let's do, let's assign the ACLs to a variable. And now the, you could go through and change the security attributes individually from false to true or vice versa. Uh, but I've also added a couple of uh, helper, uh, helper methods to grant full access or remove all access. So to keep things simple, I'll grant full access to all of the ACLs. So for each ACL in ACLs, ACL dot uh, apply template and template zero gives full access. And if I write these all out to the console, you can see everything is now true. Um, so that just changed the properties in this ACL variable, but it hasn't actually applied them to, uh, to the devices that they're associated with. So now I'll send these ACLs into the set device ACL command. And uh, now each one of those is go, gonna go into that command one at a time. And it's going to find the device based on the path and apply the uh, security attributes that are in the variables. So let's hit enter and let's get the permissions again from that get device ACL. And we can see that those permissions have now been granted. Next, I'll walk you through a script that I put together to add a universal driver hardware device. So let me change this to use the installed module, milestone PS tools. All right, and let's walk through this line by line. So first we import the module, we log into the management server. We have, uh, we get a handle to our recording server. And then on this line, we're actually adding a hardware device. So we do, we send our recording server into the add hardware command. So the command knows which recording server to add it to. We provide the address, and this is an address of a uh, open source RTSP uh, demo. And we're gonna use the default credentials. We specify the driver ID. Uh, if you know the driver ID, you can provide it here. And in the case of the universal driver, you have to provide it. Uh, but if you don't provide a driver ID, then the uh, uh, recording server will scan the device to find out which driver to use. Uh, group path, this is a, the folder that the camera will be placed into in the camera groups. And if it doesn't exist, it'll be created. And by default, any hardware is added uh, disabled. So the dash enabled switch will enable the, uh, the hardware and the first camera channel. Now, the next line, we're getting a handle to the first camera on the hardware device and there's only one so we select channel zero and then we're doing some camera settings so i want to set the fps to 25 I'm setting the streaming mode to tcp and i'm specifying the camera you are the connection uri for the rtsp stream and i'm also enabling the microphone so um, i don't have a commandlet for enabling the uh, the device channels so I'm getting a handle to our microphone and then doing my settings. So changing the codec to AAC, 
setting the connection URI in the streaming mode. And then I call microphone.enabled. I set that to true. And then I call microphone.save. Now these are configuration API commands within the, the milestone SDK. Um, so you have access to that through PowerShell. And uh, finally, I add the, uh, I create a device group for the microphone and add the microphone to it. So let's go ahead and run this script. Okay, our universal camera is added. Let's go ahead and refresh the smart client. And there it is.